Hey everybody, this is Jacob with Mortgage Coach Support. This video is to show you how to set up your basic contact information, your templates, your photo and logo, basic settings inside Edge. So to start with, you should have received a getting started email from us. What you want to do is click on your link here to get into your Edge account. And notice this is HTTPS. So when you do get in here, you probably want to save this as a favorite. So in order to do that, in Firefox you would just add a bookmark, in Internet Explorer you would add a favorite, and in Chrome you would set it as a favorite as well. Now use the login and password that we've provided for you. And When you first get in, it's going to prompt you to reset your password because we would have given you a temporary one. So go ahead and choose one that you like. Then hit OK. Now Edge will then fire up for you. It'll tell you your password has been updated. And immediately you'll notice that there's a bunch of sample files that are already in your Edge for you. Now these are just kind of guidelines to help you out with doing different types of scenarios, so you definitely do want to check these out when you get a few minutes. For the purpose of this video, we're just going to go through the settings area. There's going to be more videos on the total cost analysis, the rent versus own, and then of course the partner reports, the open house flyer, and the seller buy down flyer. So I'm going to go straight into settings so that I can set this up. You'll notice there's a bunch of tabs across the top here. Your basic contact info, this is pretty self-explanatory. You just want to fill in all your address information, your website, and of course all your different phone numbers. Now one thing I should point out is your email address is actually your login name as well. So if you change your email address inside Edge, this is going to change your login for not only Edge, but RateWatch and the community site. So keep this in mind if you ever do change your email address. Your displayed name cannot be edited. These are grayed out. But if you need those changed, just contact us over at support at mortgagecoach.com and we'll, we'll be happy to change it for you. Now the license fields down here, we've given you two license fields. And the reason for this is we want you to have one for yourself and maybe one for your company licensing or if you have different licensing that you need to put in here. We've given you two fairly large fields that you can include. Now these show up on all your reports inside Edge. So make sure and fill these guys in. Next, you want to complete your business address. Uh, these will appear on your reports as well, so make sure that that's filled in. If you ever needed to change your password, you can always come back to this settings area after you log into Edge and hit Change Password. It'll ask you for your current password, and then it'll give you a space so that you can set a new one. When you're done entering your information here, hit the Save button. Now we can move over to the Images area. Now in the images area, if you're under a site license, and I'm actually under a site license right now, you'll find that your logo has already been populated for you. If you're not under a site license, you'll find the logo is empty here and you can upload your own. Now you'll note that the ideal resolution for each of these images, the headshot and the logo, 50 by 75, and this is in pixels, this is for your portrait. Now you can use anything in that ratio and it'll still work really well inside Edge. So for instance, if my image was actually 100 by 150, that's still in that same 2 to 3 ratio, just like my, my current uh, default settings are here, and it's going to scale the right dimensions for this particular placeholder. Same thing on the logo. 200 by 50 is the recommended pixels, but you can also do 400 by 100. Uh, anything in a 4 to 1 ratio will work perfectly for this. In order to browse and select your photo and logo, hit the Browse button underneath each category. And then, of course, you want to go find the folder that has your images in it, select your photo, and hit Open. You'll see that your photo will automatically appear there. The same thing will happen with your logo. Now, one thing to keep in mind about these is that uh, these are actually a lot bigger than what you're going to see on your report. So you might notice that your logo and your photo might look a little bit fuzzy on this screen. They're going to be nice and crisp when they get to your report, though, because they get scaled down quite substantially. Now the last part of this tab is you want to make sure and choose whether you're going to use the Equal Housing Lender logo or the Opportunity logo. And you can toggle between those depending on which one you need. Now product templates. Product templates allow you to create new templates that you can associate with any loan product in Edge. So for instance, if I wanted to create a new one, I'd hit New here. Create my new template and I'm going to call this one FHA 30 Fixed. And then I'm going to check Yes for FHA. I'll put my 3.5% down payment there. Let's say that I've got a 4% rate that I can offer on this. And it's going to be a 30-year term. I'm going to leave this one as fixed. No interest-only months or balloon months. Now you have two options on how you want to do the closing costs. If you want to, you can ballpark the costs using these fields here. And these are just going to be basic figures that you come up with that would be associated with this loan program. 
you'd want to fill out each one of these fields accordingly. But the other option that you have is you can use the closing details screen. Now this actually allows you to set up individual line item fees. So in doing that, I can hit closing cost details. I can populate the different fees that I want to use. And for this case, I'm just going to use a couple. Let's see, I've got an underwriting fee, an appraisal fee, and a credit report. We can put in the dollar amount for these. And then you want to tag them as APR or non-APR, meaning uncheck the box or leave it unchecked if it's not an APR fee. So things like my underwriting would probably be APR. My appraisal and credit, however, would be non-APR fees. If you want these to default to being added to the loan amount, you can always check the boxes to add them to the loan amount, and these will be financed in. You can also choose prepaid escrows. And let me add one more fee for you. And we'll go with taxes reserves. Now, if I'm going to indicate this as a prepaid escrow, these are for things like your taxes reserved six months in advance, uh, stuff like that. You want to make sure that this box gets checked for it. Now, once you're done creating your fee schedule here, you can actually choose to apply to template. Now, this is already set in there, so you don't have to worry about it again. It's all set up. When you go and pull this loan up in any Edge presentation, you can still edit these figures. However, it's going to pre-populate all this for you. The last part I need to do on this is the upfront MIP amount, and you can toggle between entering it as a dollar amount or a percentage using this button right here. So I'm going to toggle it over to percentage. And then you can choose to add this to the loan amount using the checkbox here. Now once you're done with that template, all you have to do is go to a different screen here in Edge and it'll automatically save it. Or you can hit new and enter another template. Now fee templates. As you saw, we were able to do line item, uh, ID, line item fee templates. We were able to do line item fees in that last product template. Now what you can do is you can actually create fee templates, and those fee templates can be associated with product templates. So for instance, I'm going to go ahead and add a new fee template, and I'm going to call this one FHA 30 fixed. Now if you choose to indicate a state, this template will be only available if you choose this state inside Edge. So that said, if you want it to be available for all states, just leave the state field blank here. So I've hit OK. Now I can start adding my line item fees. So again, I'm just going to select a couple that I know I'm going to use. And of course, you'll want to fill this out in a little bit more detail. For the sake of time, I'm only going to use three of them. And then you can choose whether you want these to be added into the loan amount or not. You can choose who's going to pay them as well. So for instance, if you had fees that you know are going to be seller or lender paid, you can toggle this over and choose one of the other options. Now once you're done with this, it's already saved as a fee template. There's actually no save button here. So just like the other one, we can now toggle and just jump to any of the other tabs here. Now note that if you want to, you can associate these fee templates with these product templates. So as I did it manually on this first one, I'm going to show you how to associate it with the fee template. This drop-down box right here will allow you to select your open fee template so that you can use them. So you can see I've got my FHA 30 fixed. And when I bring that in, it brought in what I just entered over my fee schedule. Now I can hit Apply to Template, and those two templates are actually tied together. So now anytime I choose this FHA 30 fixed template, it's not only going to bring in the loan parameters, but it's also going to bring in the fees for me. Now report templates. What these are is these are the default verbiage that goes along the sidebar text in each one of your reports in Edge. They also include the bottom disclaimers that appear at the bottom of every report, as well as an extended disclaimer. Now the total cost analysis, for instance, has several areas where you can hit more info on the report. Now the more info sections will show this verbiage here by default. You can change it individually for each report, but this is the section that allows you to set it globally so that you have a default text that shows up for each one. Again, you definitely want to check your disclaimer, make sure that it indicates what you want to see. And then you can edit your extended disclaimer. If you're licensed in multiple states, if you need to put additional branding on it, you want to, you want to fill that in here. And this is going to be a full page that you can use for all of your reports. It'll come off as a as last page of the report effectively. Once you're done with it, hit OK. 
Now anytime you bring up a total cost analysis, these settings will appear. So you'll have that default verbiage, your extended disclaimer, and your regular disclaimer. You'll want to do this for each one of your, of your forms. Say for instance, the seller buy-down, you've got a presentation title that you can set, you've got a short description, a long description, and your disclaimer. You can additionally involve an extended disclaimer on each one of these. So rent versus own, this is more of the sidebar text that you can edit, and then your extended disclaimer for that one. And then the open house flyer. You can choose a presentation title, you can choose what to use for your pricing label, and then you can choose both your disclaimers. The regular one that shows up at the bottom of the report and the extended disclaimer. Now once you've edited these here in the report templates, these will automatically funnel over to all your existing reports. So if you were to create a new one, it would have these disclaimers on it. If you edit a disclaimer and go back to a previously created report, that disclaimer is going to show up on the previously created report. So and I'm talking about just the footer here, this disclaimer text footer that I've got highlighted, and the extended disclaimer. In these options where you have verbiage inside here, you can actually edit these on the individual reports. So no need to come back in and edit them all the time here in the report templates. Now you also have an account tab, and you can see that mine is actually grayed out. I'm on a site license, so I don't have a recurring payment. But if you do have a recurring payment because you purchased this on your own, this is where you can come to edit your billing information, your credit card information, and such. Now Social Pro, if you do have Social Pro in your account, you'll have a Social Pro tab here that you can access, and you can generate things like your newsfeed titles, you can write a bio about yourself, and then this, you can save this to your Social Pro page. For more information on Social Pro, please see the Social Pro video that we've got in our library. Now the last tab here is the click to call. Now by default, you're given three free click to call credits. These credits are used to put a button on each one of your reports that allows the borrower to click a button to automatically contact you by phone. It sets up a phone call between you and them and each call costs a credit. Now as I said, you get three for free. After that, you can purchase them in buckets of 20 credits for 20 bucks. You can also select which number to be used for this. So if you've set up your phone numbers back in the contact info section, you can choose to use your office number or your cell phone number as the one to call. Now that's it for all of our settings, guys. If you have any questions on these, do email us over at support at mortgagecoach.com. We'd be happy to help you set this up. Thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.